on the show in wheel spin we drive the chevrolet trailblazer in wheel spin we ride the honda cbr 650f and in quicker cars we present the quicker car guide and on the road we drive the fiat punto evo to uchagao What I have with me today is pure American muscle, courtesy General Motors, of course, an SUV which is on its way into India and with luck, you should be driving it soon, the Chevy Trailblazer. As far as full-blown American SUVs go, this Trailblazer here might not look as brawny or as mean, but I can tell you that this is the size that really works for India at 4.8 meters she is not really that small and she packs in seven seats which means a huge amount of practicality and at first looks she gives you the impression that she is quite capable with a confident stance and she means business general motors will position the trailblazer as a premium seven seater suv with all the bells and the whistles and a powerful motor the trailblazer is a chassis on body suv and measures in at over 4.8 meters long and sits on a wheelbase exceeding 2.8 meters with a tall suv stance and it has enough presence to ensure that you take notice of it in case it looms up in your rear view the interiors of this trailblazer here is actually quite different from what you see or what you expect from modern day premium suvs and depending upon your taste or the lack of it you might like it or even dislike it because this is quite subdued quite understated and you don't find any gimmicky things here in terms of garnishings in terms of colorful dials instead what you get here is a dual tone fascia with a central console here which is nicely located and quite ergonomic a display here which gives you pretty much all the information but in terms of luxuries it really isn't lacking because you still get a whole list of features as well as leather seats here a leather wrapped steering wheel here the gear knob which has got nice chrome garnishing here just a little added touch of chrome which does liven up things and of course you get multifunction buttons on the steering wheels but what i disagree with here is the instrumentation i think for a car this size it's a bit too small in terms of the binacle sizing and all the information that you do get here displayed is also little difficult to read when you are driving on the highway so i think this could have been reworked and made a little more user friendly here As I had said earlier this is a 7 seater which means it has 3 rows of seat as far as space is concerned especially on the second row of seats I don't see any issue with it the big question always is in a 7 seater if the third row of seat has enough space so time for me to find that out Not only is it an exercise getting in and out of this car but sadly like most cars with the third row of seat this one too is cramped there's hardly any leg space here and on top of it you feel a bit stuffy because there are no windows here the roof is sloping down as well so this is not a seat you will really enjoy your drive in if you are being driven over a long distance in fact this is what many people call the mother in law seat no i am not suggesting anything The Trailblazer here is powered by a 2.8 liter diesel engine and after you heard me say 2.8 liter you probably would presume that it's a big engine but actually it's not a big engine it's just a four cylinder unit but having said that let me tell you it uses double over it cams it's a 16 valve engine so it pumps out 200 brake horsepower as max power and a very healthy 500 newton meters of torque and it is this torque which actually makes this car so very drivable in city traffic the power delivery is quite linear when you initially fire the engine you hear her loud and clear 
and after you hit cruising speeds on the highway, she does settle down a bit, but still, this is one engine which is loud. So you keep on hearing the engine no matter what rev band you are in. This might be a loud engine, but actually it's quite responsive. Every time you blip the throttle, she does respond to your wake-up call quite well and the car just surges forward and it's a nice reassuring music that you hear from the engine bay. What I drive is a car with an automatic transmission. The engine is mated to a six-speed automatic gearbox and she does the job of shifting the gears quite well actually. It comes with a manual mode as well so you can actually play the race car driver if you want to but I don't think you need to because this does the job quite well. In terms of suspension setup, she is set up more on the stiffer side, so you feel all the potholes and the aberrations of the Indian roads filter in quite clearly. And it's not really very comfortable if you hit a bad patch of road. When you start driving, you realize that the steering is a bit heavy and it does require some inputs. But as you start building up speeds, it gradually becomes quite nice and easy and in fact you do get a lot of feedback from the steering so in terms of drivability you get a feeling that you are behind the wheels of a nice big car after you spend some time behind this wheel of this trailblazer the impression that you will gather is that this is one car which is capable of taking you anywhere really it's got a real nice big car feeling Everything feels very good inside, it's comfortable and of course there is plenty of power coming from the engine and the high ground clearance and the high seating position gives you a lot of confidence to take it actually anywhere you want to. So overall this is a typical American SUV with a go anywhere attitude. In terms of driver aid and safety, it comes with anti-lock brakes, traction control, hill assist, EBD, cornering brake assist and two airbags for the front seats. In fact, it is this high ground clearance which makes the Trailblazer very much of an SUV. The 241 millimeters of clearance really comes in handy when you take her off the road and the powerful grunt of the engine adds to the confidence. However, it's the lack of a 4x4 which stops us from calling it a true off-roader. And that's really a pity because the Trailblazer really has it all to make it a complete SUV. The Trailblazer here is a nice SUV, but it still might not do for General Motors what it desperately needs, which is to generate higher sales numbers. The Trailblazer might not do that because SUVs in India in this category do not sell as many. So the sales numbers might remain the same, but what it will do for the company is to play the role of a brand ambassador and tell its customers that here is a company which not only has a wide range of products, but also quality products as well. And as a customer, what you get is a very capable machine, an SUV which pretty much gives you everything that you might need. Plenty of space, a long list of features and a powerful talky engine and it also comes with a high ground clearance. However, I wish it also came with a 4x4 option. The Trailblazer will be available only in one variant and it will be brought into the country via the CBU or the completely built up route. Hence, it's not going to be cheap. But we feel that it will provide a nice alternative to what is already in the market in this category as the Trailblazer is a vehicle which is well made, feels good to drive and has a premium feel to it.
Indian motorcycle market over the last few years have grown rapidly and that's been across segments, be it the super bikes, the cruisers or even the commuter bikes. But one segment that was left somewhat unattended to was a smaller sports bike segment and that is the segment now Honda has addressed with their latest product, the CBR Honda 650F. If you thought super bikes were a bit too big for you, then maybe you should have a look at this one. A smaller sport bike is what many, including the young riders, wish for. And nothing really prepares you better for riding a super bike than a bike like this. The CBR 650F is a bike which is attractive, lightweight and easy to maneuver, but reasonably quick. And you will find this out for yourself if you find an open stretch of road. And I like the sound of the exhaust as you rev her hard. In terms of the styling, the CBR 650F is a typical sports bike. A huge bulging tank, full fairings, nice graphics on the fairings and of course a lean forward riding position. But remember that Honda also has a bigger sibling of this, the 1 litre CBR Fireblade. And obviously styling cues have been borrowed from that. But of course as compared to the Fireblade, this is much more of a relaxed bike to ride. The seating position in spite of being a lean forward is not as drastic. And of course it's a much slower bike than the Fireblade. So you can actually ride this bike long distance without tiring too much. And another thing that impresses me is the fit and finish of the bike. Right from the paint job to the quality of materials, everything is top notch and looks good and feels solid. But for the time being, the only color that will be on offer is this one. If you want a different color scheme, then you will have to wait till Honda launches something new. The CBR 650F here is powered by an inline 4 cylinder motor, a 648cc unit and I can tell you one thing, even if I had written this machine without the Honda badge here, I still possibly would have said this is a Honda because of the way she delivers the power and the way she rides. The engine here is smooth, it's refined and the power delivery is absolutely linear. It's a pleasure to twist the throttle on this bike. The engine here is mated to a 6-speed transmission which is equally a delight to ship through. Overall, this is one bike you will enjoy riding even if you ride very hard. The motor here delivers 85 brake horsepower and I personally tend to believe that this is slightly on the lower side. I would have been happier with another 15 to 20 brake horsepower more because when you are cruising on the highway, you do tend to run out of a top and whack. But it is the 62 Newton meters of torque which actually sees the bike very well in city traffic. And in terms of rideability, this is really nice because this is lightweight and it's very easy to maneuver it through city traffic. In fact, be it the highway or even the city traffic, this bike is a breeze. And the double pedal discs on the front wheel do a fantastic job of stopping the bike well. And it also comes with ABS for added safety. The only thing that warrants a bit of caution when riding is the ground clearance of 133 millimeters, which is pretty much in the range of a standard sports bike fare, but it does bottom out on some nasty speed breakers. The bike sits on what Honda calls a twin spar steel frame with monoshocks and weighs in at 215 kilograms and is a shade over 2.1 meters in length. The CBR 650 here is a machine which I'm sure will create a niche for itself, especially among the young set of riders and more so because there is hardly any competition except for Kawasaki. This is a good looking bike, rides really well and of course is reasonably priced. So it has many things going for it and this is one bike which will also prepare you to ride a super bike one day. And what I also like about this CBR 650F is the price tag. At Rs 7.3 lakhs, ex showroom Delhi, it is a decent price for a bike with this kind of build quality, performance and the reliability it is sure to offer with the Honda badge on it. And this I am sure will also add to the reason as to why you might see quite a few of these on Indian roads.
This week I'm off to a place which I'm sure most of you wouldn't have heard of, a place called Nucha Gao. And what this place promises to offer me is peace, quiet, a lovely old colonial bungalow which has been turned into a luxury hotel and a brilliant view of the majestic river Ganga. All this seems very inviting and I am going to be on my way very soon and to get me there what I have with me is the Fiat Punto Evo. I think she's going to make a brilliant companion over the weekend too. The Fiat Punto Evo here is a car which I think makes for a perfect weekend companion. It has got everything that you'd look for in a car if you're going on a long distance drive. Plenty of space, a powerful engine and of course all the convenience and comfort features. And it looks great too. A touch of piano black on the fascia, leather wrapped steering wheel. And I think the seats here are not only great looking but also support you very well. Overall I think I'm going to have a lovely time in this Punto Evo. Uchagao is situated at a distance of around 135 kilometers from Delhi and for most of the way you travel on NH24 but just before you reach Brajghat you leave the national highway and take the road to Uchagao which is another 30 kilometers. Fiat sells the Punto Evo with both the diesel as well as the petrol engines and what I drive today is the diesel engine and I simply love the diesel for two reasons. Number one, it gives great fuel efficiency. I get over 20 kilometers to a litre and that's really good especially on a long highway drive because it helps me save some money. And the second thing that I like is the amount of torque. It produces 209 newton meters of torque and that really comes in handy while going past slow traffic on the highway. And I simply love cars which produce a lot of torque because it makes them so easy to drive. Overall, I feel Fiat has given you the right mix with this Punto Evo. It's a very balanced car, good in fuel economy, lots of power, about 91 brake horsepower, and of course, it handles very well on the highway. After leaving the national highway, the drive is on a beautiful but narrow road with a canal flowing along for company. Finally, I arrive in Uchagao and what is going to be my first stop here. After three and a half hours of driving from Delhi on different kinds of roads, I finally make it to Uchagao. And my first stop here is going to be this, the Uchagao Fort, a century and a half old building which has been turned into a luxury hotel. And I'm told this is just the right place for you to come and unwind and relax in the lap of luxury. Time for me to go and check this out. The Uchagao Fort, as it is called, belongs to the royal family here and is a 150-year-old structure. And as you walk in, you are greeted by tall ceilings with chandeliers and plenty of trophies all around, reminding you of the days gone by when plenty of wildlife, including tigers, roamed freely and hunting was considered to be a manly sport. As you walk through the building and take a look at the old family pictures and even pictures of automobiles which are now considered to be classic, you are transported back into a different time and age. But in today's age, the vintage has to be mixed with luxury as well. So you find rooms done in traditional style, but you have all the amenities to make you stay here comfortable. And after you have taken in the sights and the sound, you can also retire to the library with a book in your hand for a cozy afternoon. Uchagao Fort, which has now become a hotel, turned out to be exactly the kind of a place that I expected. A place which is steeped in history, a place which gives you a glimpse into the past days of glory and grandeur, a place which makes the phrase live like a king seem so very real. But today it's turned into a hotel where you can run away from your city life and spend a few quiet days in the lap of nature, enjoying the quiet and of course indulging yourself.
After spending some leisurely time in Uchagao Fort, it was time for me to drive to the banks of the River Ganga. And I passed through the small marketplace, I realized that Uchagao might be a one-horse village. But what it didn't lack in was multiple beauty parlors. Guess it's time for me to think of an alternative profession. But soon we had left Uchagao behind as we headed out towards the River Ganga, a distance of 6 kilometers, and the roads first became bad, then dirt, and then no roads at all. And in the process, I mastered the art of overtaking bullock carts and surviving real wildlife, like sheep and water buffaloes. And this particular one took an instant liking for my pretty steed. But a little coaxing with a couple of short blasts of the horn, and she consented to give us the rite of passage. After this little detour through real India, we were greeted by the River Ganga in full flow. Another thing that you can do while you are in Uchagao is catch a sight of the majestic river Ganga here as she flows through a vast expanse of land and fills the entire area with a majestic sight. It's really a beautiful sight and what more is that you can catch a glimpse of the river dolphins here I am told and if I am lucky I might see a few of them here. Well, didn't have much luck with the dolphins. Such sightings need patience I was told but then I had to make the trip back home too. Honestly, didn't mind not seeing the dolphins as it was an experience in itself to sit by the river and watch it serenely flow. All I have to say is that Uchagao might not figure very prominently on a tourist map, but if you do manage to locate it and land up here, what you'll be rewarded with is a very nice quiet weekend and you will totally unwind yourself before you come back to the city. I of course drove the Fiat Punto Evo all the way up here and I think this is just an ideal car for this kind of a drive. It's good both for the highways as well as for the narrow roads that lead up to here.